Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, where does this problem come from? Does that look familiar? If it does, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. This is actually, this was inspired by a video that was made by Black Pen, Red Pen. I think it was maybe yesterday. And I just thought about it, and I'm going to be solving this problem in two ways. So this is basically a video response to Black Pen, Red Pen's video. All right, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem in two ways. First, I'm going to solve it the same way that he did in his video, and then I'm going to show my alternative method. All right, so we have the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x equals 1. First of all, since we have a radical equation, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. That's pretty standard, right? So that gives us x plus 2 times the square root of x equals 1. And then we're going to go ahead and isolate the radical one more time and then square both sides again. Obviously, the goal is to get rid of all the radicals. And then this is going to give us 4x because square root of x squared is x. And this gives us 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Now let's go ahead and put everything on the right hand side where x squared is positive and then write that on the left hand side, kind of sweet sides. x squared minus 2x minus 4x, that's going to be minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. Great. Now you can solve this problem in so many different ways, right? You can use Vieta's formulas, you can use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula tells you that x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And then you get the square root of 32, which is 16 times 2, by the way. And you can kind of write it as 4 root 2 all over 2. And then you can just go ahead and divide everything by 2. And that gives you the x values as 3 plus minus 2 root 2. Which means there are two solutions. Let's say x sub 1 is 3 plus 2 root 2. And x sub 2 is 3 minus 2 root 2. Because this is a quadratic equation you're supposed to get two solutions unless those solutions are, you know, uh, the same, right? When the discriminant is zero. But that's not the case here. Another way to approach this problem, which is kind of nice, is a formula that was kind of known for many years, but recently publicized, I think, by Poshan Low, and I made a video about it. Uh, most people call it Poshan Low's method, but it's not actually his. But anyways, that's a different story. And here's how it works. You look at the coefficient of x, which is b, b is negative 6. We know that if a is 1, then the sum of the roots is negative b over a, or just negative b, because b a is 1. So in this case, that would be 6. So we are looking for two numbers whose sum is 6, in other words, right? That's also the way we factor trinomials. So to do that, I'm going to assume that my solutions are in the form 3 plus, I'm probably not going to use a, 3 plus let's say r and 3 minus r, okay? And then we're just going to go ahead and use Vieta's formulas. The product is this, which is 9 minus r squared. And from Vieta's formulas, the product is c over a, which is 1 in this case. From here, we get r, r squared equals 8, which gives us r equals 2 root 2 and negative 2 root 2. Along with this and this, you're going to get the exact same solution. It's just another way, a cooler way to solve quadratic, especially when the b is negative. I mean, sorry, I meant that when the b is even, right? Because it's easy to cut in half. Anyways, so those are the solutions. The question is, do they both satisfy this equation? So that's where the difficulty lies. And it's probably why he said in his video in the thumbnail, be careful. Because you really need to be careful. You can't just conclude that, okay, I found two solutions. Those are solutions to this equation. You need to check. Why? Because this is a radical equation and we squared both sides. So we might have introduced, let's just pretend, we don't know the result, that uh, extraneous solutions, right? So when you plug in this number right here, as he did in his video, you're going to get something like this. And probably someone who did a little bit of math will probably realize, okay, this is not equal to 1 for sure, right? Look at all these numbers. No way that's going to equal 1. I know, I'm very uh, non-rigorously. Non non but then what, what about the second one? We still need to test because a radical equation can have no solutions, but this one does. 
because what happens is this is a perfect square by the way this is root 2 minus 1 squared so when you square root and take the positive root it's going to be root 2 minus 1 so you're going to get something like this okay and then when you distribute and square root 3 minus 2 root 2 plus 2 root 2 minus 2 you're going to get these two cancel out square root of 1 that's equal to 1 so yes that satisfies the equation therefore this is a good solution so that's basically the first method which you need to be very careful with but with the second method that i'm going to introduce you don't really need to be that careful maybe you need to be a little bit of careful okay so here's how it goes we have this radical equation and then i'm just gonna use substitution because you know what substitution is cool i'm gonna call this u so square root of x is u and that implies obviously we know that x equals zero does not satisfy so i'm gonna just say that okay square root of x or u must be greater than zero you got that you got that okay now with that substitution x becomes u squared so my equation becomes the square root of u squared plus 2u and if it's your birthday happy birthday to you now you can definitely go ahead and square both sides at this point i mean we have to square at some point right and when you do you're going to get something like this and if you add one to both sides you're going to get a perfect square on the left hand side this method is called completing the square by the way you can take the square roots that's going to be plus minus root 2 and from here you get two solutions negative 1 plus root 2 let's call that u sub 1 and u sub 2 negative 1 minus root 2 uh oh negative 1 minus root 2 is definitely negative because you are subtracting a positive number from a negative number which makes it even more negative right negatively larger so there's no way this can work because remember our assumption or uh, the rule says you must be positive okay always try to be positive right so then this would be the only way it works but does it really really work well if u is equal to that let's just write it as root 2 minus 1 and then that means square root of x is equal to root 2 minus 1 that looks good to me and square both sides you're going to get 3 minus 2 root 2 by the way i'm going to go ahead and share the link to his video uh, in the description down below and possibly maybe in a pinned comment as well if I don't forget let me know what you think because this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye